now you're fifteen. I would like you to listen to the acronym that I'm going to introduce to you. Uh, am I audible? No. Okay. I have to stand a bit closer. I have to adjust. Thank you. 
simple statement, yet it holds profound wisdom, especially in your journey as a student and a believer. This phrase adopted by many schools, or this motto, emphasizes the need of acquiring control of oneself, overcoming one's emotions and temptations before attempting to manage others. I believe that sometimes the most significant obstacles standing in the way of our success and our spiritual growth is not the problems that we face in the outside world, but the fight that we are in with ourselves. Whether it's putting things off, being afraid of failing, trying to be perfect, or putting too much pressure on ourselves. These inner battles can be our worst enemies. They are not seen and they are often not recognized, but they have the power to stop us from reaching our full potential. So sometimes we can be our own uh, worst opponents, getting in our own way. So Dr. Brene Brown, she's a researcher in uh, shame and empathy, and she's a storyteller. She says in her book, The Gifts of Imperfection, that understanding the difference between healthy striving and perfectionism is critical to laying down the shield and picking up your life. Research shows that perfectionism actually hampers success. In fact, it's often the path to depression, anxiety, addiction, and life paralysis. When perfectionism is driving, shame is always riding shotgun and fear is the annoying backseat driver. And this brings me to a very important thought from Galatians 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, Paul is talking about the highest level of self-conquest, surrendering not to defeat, but to the transformative power of Christ within us. By doing this, we recognize that our faith in Jesus, who gives us strength and direction, is what gives us the power to deal with our inner fights. So although we know that this is true, it doesn't stop us from feeling stuck. So how can I conquer myself? What is preventing me from conquering myself? Feeling stuck can show up in many ways, such as a lack of drive, procrastination, uncertainty about the, fe the future, or even spiritual dryness. This stuckness might last for days, months, or even years. You know, it's been months since I last cleaned that study room of mine, or it's time to clean out that one food cupboard, or I've said for weeks that I'm going to sign up for a gym membership. I have not been able to register for that one course that I've been interested in for so long. What about ending that unhealthy relationship or confronting that difficult situation that you have been putting, up, uh, putting off for far too long. So don't we all sometimes feel trapped within this inability to act? Do you maybe feel stuck in your head? All of these things are getting in the way of your productivity, your creativity, and your motivation. So can you become unstuck from things that hold you back? Can you conquer yourself? Let me quickly remind us all what are the barriers that keep us stuck and hold us back. There's a well-known psychiatrist and professor in ethical business management at the Stellenbosch University, Professor Renata Skuman, and she explains how we can feel stuck. She talks about uncertainty. We might not be sure of ourselves because maybe we failed a few times before, and a negative thought pattern can quickly make us think that we will never be successful at anything again. We don't always see life as a journey of learning. Sometimes we see it as a list of wins and losses. Do you have doubts about your skills, even though you know you are qualified or ready? 
There are some times when we don't know where to begin with some jobs or assignments because we aren't sure what to do or how to do it. Then there's the fear of failing or not knowing what will happen. We might be so afraid of failure that we stop trying altogether. As Dr. Brene Brown says, it's worse to spend your life on the outside looking in, wondering what if, than it is to try and dare greatly and risk the chance of failure. Then there's project management issues. Do you have difficulty being organized and planning? Do you keep on procrastinating? Do you maybe set unreasonable goals for yourself? Do you associate your expectations with perfectionism? Are you standing in your own way? All these culprits contribute to your stuckness. And then there are some practical obstacles. Is your environment, your desk, your room, your files, your class notes, are they cluttered? Are you too tired? Are you charged emotionally? Are you stressed, not able to focus on your goals? When you are tired, overstretched, and you try to multitask with little or no support, you will have great difficulty overcoming the stuckness. And then the last one is frustration. This year, you will be faced with new ways of thinking at Haldeberg College. Classes will be complex, and maybe you will have difficulty in sorting out problems. The reason is simple. This new way of thinking is triggering your working memory that is similar to your short-term memory. And you will not be able to hold information for long. Sometimes our working memory is so cluttered and overloaded by distractions that it is virtually impossible to juggle all these new responsibilities. This year you will be faced with several new things that you need to figure out. Daily we will all be faced with increased turmoil and stress. This will inev inevitably lead to feelings of frustration and the inability to act. But now for the good news. You can become unstuck. You can conquer yourself. Professor Skuman gives us a few tips on how to become unstuck. So reduce your uncertainty. When you need to know something, do your research. Go online. Ask someone with experience. Pray about it. Knowledge is power. The more you know and understand, the more informed your decisions will be and your uncertainty will be much less. Also examine your thought process. Be aware of the constant inner monologue you have with yourself. Is it negative? What is this voice? Where does it come from? Make a serious effort to identify certain patterns of thinking. Once you are aware of this, you can work on it. Reflect on the powerful messages in the Bible what does God say about you? For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Then seek perspective, guidance, support. How can you maybe approach certain tasks in a healthy and sustainable way? How did other people experience this process? How did Jesus approach certain things? If you are dealing with a difficult situation in your life, consider talking to mentors, lecturers, friends, and classmates about it. Pray about it. Ask a reliable partner or friend to hold you accountable on your journey to finish a task. And then up your skills. If you want to learn new skills, you are at the right place. Haldeberg College is the place for you. You have enrolled for a certain course, a degree, a degree, a diploma, or a certificate. So keep on reading books. Keep being curious. Learn how to manage your time. Cultivate a mindset to grow. If you are busy with what seems like a daunting task, break it into small goals. How do you eat an elephant? Bite by bite. And celebrate each small success. There is nothing better to keep you motivated than to celebrate these small wins. 
and then declutter your physical space and your mental space. Okay, do I need to say more? Throw out the bad, reorganize your life, make space for better things, make lists of things you need to do. Do not try to keep everything in your mind. Have a mental health check. If you feel severely anxious, depressed, or even suffer from some sort of mental health issue, seek professional advice. This is a very good start to get unstuck. And the last one, work on your energy balance. Practice self-care to fill your tank. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 to 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Remove inner energy sapping objects, activities or people who drain your energy. If something is not useful, joyful or beautiful, get rid of it. As we look forward to this new semester, let us embrace the challenge of conquering ourselves. Let us remember that through Christ, we have the strength to overcome any internal struggle. And let us step forward with faith, knowing that in every moment of feeling stuck, there is an opportunity for growth, for deeper faith, and for renewed strength. I leave you with the words of Philippians 4 verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May this truth guide you as you embark on this new semester, filled with challenges to face and victories to claim, both within yourself and beyond. Thank you and God bless you on your journey. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Carrot. I have a few announcements before we um, congratulate those who have been on the Dean's List. Just two. Those who have classes, Dr. Hashemino. Thank you. Those who have class with Dr. Hashalinga. Uh, you will commence your classes with him next week. He is attending a leadership uh, meeting this week. And for more details about the work to be covered during this period, please make contact with the dean of the faculty, Dr. Mshorshi. Then secondly, for assembly and any future meetings or convocations that take place in Anderson Hall, as you are seated now, all the students fill up the rows from the front and then the rows behind the students are dedicated to staff members. So if you'll kindly remember those. And now we're going to hand out the certificates to those who have qualified to be on the Dean's List in all our qualifications, our official qualifications. And I'm going to ask Dr. Professor Zygmunt to assist me with this task. Okay, in the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Communication, congratulations to Serena Martin, who obtained 83%. Also in the program of the Bachelor of Arts in Communication, Zoe Apollos, 88%. Not present, okay. Our next one is Atiyah Fani 
with 89%. Our next award goes to, uh, it's in the program for the Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, and it goes to Erin Stain, 79% in abstentia. Congratulations. <laughs> and the next one is Chloe Sch Schwemberger with 80%. Okay, in the Bachelor of Education, Foundation Phase Teaching, I'd like to um, congratulate Keish Millwood for 75%. Our next award goes to Tazrin Latakhan with 76%. Our next award goes to Jaden van Stur with 76%. Our next award goes to Sinatemba Butelesi, 77%. Our next award goes to Haley Peterson with 77%. Also in the Bachelor of Education Foundation phase, Gemma Lee de Swart with 79%. Our next award goes to Sanri Kluter with 80%. The next award goes to Tavia Prince with 80%. Congratulations. Our next award goes to Zaya van Rienen with 81%. The next award goes to Nasia Chalice with 82%. Our next award goes to Megan Ibrahim with 82%. Congratulations. <laughs> Our next award, also in the Bachelor of Education Foundation phase, Isabella Otto with 84%. Tanya Pretorius with 84%. Roseanne Williams, 84%. 
Our next award goes to Lunati Sobekwa, 90%. And our last award in the um, Bachelor of, of uh, Education in Foundation Phase Teaching goes to Shelby Buerta with 95%. Our next Dean's List awards go to um, students in the Bachelor of Commerce in Accounting. Simukelele Magagula with 76%. Tanik Williams, 79%. Congratulations. Now in the Bachelor of Business Administration, Nonklankla. Ran, ran Lejilke, I apologize for the pronunciation, with 83%. Congratulations. In the Bachelor of Arts in Theology, congratulations to Yapo Kupe with 78%. Congratulations to Samantha Masuku with 78%. Congratulations. Congratulations to Ntokoso Vilane. 82%. Our next award goes to Kirshlin Chetty with 85%. Our next award goes to Edith De La Lande with 89%. Congratulations. <laughs> Also in the program for the Bachelor of Theology, Alan Price, 90%. Congratulations to Darren Cecil with 92%. Finally, our last candidate and uh, award goes to Moritz Wenzel, 93%. Well done, Moritz. Thank you. 
Thank you. A final round of applause to all of the people who've made it onto the Dean's List. It's wonderful to see you all here. We just want to extend an invitation to each student and staff member this coming Saturday. You'll know it as the Sabbath here, Sabbath. Um, we want to invite you to Anderson Hall. Um, all Nations Campus Church welcomes each one of you. We're going to start here at 10 o'clock. We have a program here. Lunch will be served also, and there will be a uh, email going out today so that you can RSVP so that your lunch can be prepared. So join us that day, this coming Saturday, here in Anderson Hall. Uh, before I close in prayer, <clears throat> We will lead out after I've said amen, and they'll lead out from the front, so let the people on the stage enter, and then from the front, you can leave the auditorium. Shall we stand for prayer? Dear God, as we look forward to a new semester, we pray that you be with each one of the students uh, we think of their nerves at the moment, and we just ask that your spirit be with them, that they just need to focus, and we know that they'll make a tremendous success of this semester. We commit each one to you, we commit the staff to you, and we ask that you move ahead, that we might follow. We commit, you, commit ourselves to you once more, praying in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>